We are here to present to you the Accelerating Quick via hardware offloads through a socket interface presentation. That was our POC we made to actually try to accelerate something in the Quick protocol. Uh, my name is Maciej Machnikowski. I work for Intel, and I will present that with... I'm Joshua Hay, and I also work for Intel. So the agenda for today is uh, a bit of background. Of course, no, uh, not everyone here knows what Quick is, so we will tell a couple words about it. Uh, then we will say why we actually tried to offload and what we offloaded. And then we will switch to Josh's parts, which is the socket interface. So what is Quick? Who doesn't know what Quick is? Okay, <laughs> I will tell you and, uh, about it anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so a Quick is a reliable transport protocol layered on top of UDP. It's alternative to TCP with TLS, uh, with a lower connection setup latency and than the TCP. It supports the zero round trip time, time resumes for the connections that were already established and one round trip time for the connections that are new. It supports streams within connections and has an embedded uh, encryption and authentication. Yeah, so, but of course, with all new great protocols, there are some challenges. Uh, when Google tried to actually started deploying the uh, Quick to serve the CAD videos over YouTube, uh, they found out the, that um, the cost of uh, the CPU cost of uh, transmitting data over Quick is about two or three times more than TCP with TLS, uh, and it actually formed a barrier to adoption because well. No one wants to spend cycles by just, for just transmitting data. Uh, the reason for that is that TCP was optimized over the years and UDP was always not so much. Uh, so we decided that we will try to offload some parts of Quick uh, to actually see how much can we improve that. <coughs> and also we wanted to start now because uh, it's still uh, not finalized, so we can still put some changes into the IETF uh, spec to actually make it offloadable. And of course, yeah. Uh, okay, so what we want, uh, wanted to offload. The first thing we tried to offload was a cryptography. Uh, Quick protocol by mm, uses two methods of uh, encryption. One is AES-GCM and other is ChachaPoly. For our POC, we decided to use the AES-GCM. Uh, then we mm, tried to offload the segmentation. Uh, luckily, the patches for the software segmentation came up when we did the POC. Uh, <coughs> and then we, of course, uh, offload checksums, but everyone does it right now, so that's not a part of, of this presentation. And of course, the challenge is that the quick stack runs in the user space, so we actually needed to come up with some creative ideas how to pass everything we need to the hardware from the user space. Okay, so a couple words about our test topology. Uh, we use the quick toy stack that is part of Google's Chromium project. Uh, the toy stack actually it's not really designed for performance and scalability and runs only on single thread, so we had to hack it a bit and uh, actually uh, to, to show any results and scale it, scale it up. Uh, to do that, we actually use the socket reuse and uh, reuse port and socket reuse address to allow running more than one instance of the quick server on the same UDP port, because our hardware actually supports one port for now. <coughs> uh, and we use the RSS to spread the connection between the uh, servers. <coughs> uh, we run those tests, well, okay, okay so maybe let's start. Uh, we also had to modify the Chromium stack to send non-encrypted traffic and receive non-encrypted packets uh, over the so socket and through our hardware. So basically our hardware, uh, our hardware uh, was uh, supposed to encrypt our packets. 
and also segment them later. And we needed to somehow pass, uh, pass it all the keys and, and parameters that are, were needed to, to actually offload that. Uh, we used the uh, Excel 710 connected with the FPGA that actually did all this heavy lifting. And the, we ran it on the dual core server with a bit of RAM to actually allow the scaling. Mm. Okay, yeah, and uh, all the servers that we were mm, running, we, we used 15 instances of the server, were bound to the same NUNMA node that uh, Nick was connected to. Assumptions. Of course, since this was a POC, we had to make some assumptions to actually make it happen. So we used the GQuick version uh, Q044, and our hardware agent actually was uh, support, supposed to um, support IETF draft 11 packet format. So we had to modify the stack to actually conform to that standard. We had to, um, yes, uh, and since we used the IETF draft 11, packet number encryption wasn't there yet. Uh, key exchange is still owned by the stack to prevent the ossification. Uh, and uh, essays were programmed to the hardware only when the connection was mm, properly negotiated by the stack. Uh, and we enabled the offload only for the short header packets since all the data is transmitted using them. <coughs> so first we started with the mm, crypto offload and uh, we gained actually about 13% of the throughput and 13% uh, better CPU utilization. And what's important on this uh, chart, um, actually, yeah, the CPU utilization is drawn with the lines and bars represent the throughput for every second of the test that, uh, that the test was run. And the most important part is that when we are saturating the CPU utilization for those 15 servers, we see that we gained a lot of throughput by using those uh, uh, the crypto offload. And as a second step, we also enabled the segmentation offload. And here we can see that we uh, got about 32% gain in the throughput and 16% uh, of the CPU utilization. Uh, and of course, we, uh, the transmission time for the data that we transmitted, this was done for 15 servers, 60 clients, and 10 streams each, and 50 max files. Uh, we see the significant uh, gain in the time of the test. And of course, all those results are from the POC, so there might be, you know, the results may be a bit different. So now to the Josh. Okay, thanks Maciek. So as Maciek mentioned, we have to program the keys into the hardware from user space, which is a bit of a problem. Um, so we, we were kind of proposing a generic crypto offload interface, uh, similar to KTLS or TLS offload, just in the sense that you send the keys through socket options, basically. The first thing we had to do was enable the UDP upper layer protocol infrastructure, because it wasn't there at the time. And one of the big caveats to doing this is we have to bind the socket to the device we are offloading to. We can't let a packet get sent down in the clear and then go out some other port where the SA doesn't exist. That would be a big security hole. The other reason we need to do this is to call the hooks into the driver to program the hardware. We need the net dev reference so we can access the DevOps structure, which I will show you in a few seconds. There we go. Okay, so this is just uh, an example flow of the, the top part of that previous image. So you start with the, the Chromium stack, you use setsock up to, with this new socket layer option, um, not tied to the name, but that's, that's what we decided to go with for now. And you have the command add SA TX. So we're adding a transmit security association. And then the add SA structure there contains all the keys and necessary information to do the offload. So it goes through the socket. And then when it hits the socket layer, we have our 
our net dev and the registered DevOps struct with the hook into the driver. And when that's, that calls into the driver and we have our specific function to format the, the data we need to send to the hardware, it does whatever, whatever's required at that stage. And this is a bit of an eye chart, but I wanted to provide a, a whole image of what we're proposing. So these are all the commands we would need. So we have an init, which does the binding and whatever else needs to be done for that offload. We have the add SA for TX and RX. We have the update, which we need for quick because the, we, need, we need the full packet number to do the encryption. And that's not sent down with each packet. So periodically, the Chromium stack will update the full packet number in the hardware database. So we can use that to construct the nonce. And then delete SA, uh, we have a git caps, so we know that the hardware is actually capable of doing this offload. And then this offload OK hook. Oh, and these, these last two are git socket options, so it can be returned to the stack. But the offload OK is to query the state of the hardware to make sure we can still offload certain SAs. So if it was reset and all the SAs are gone, you don't want to be sending down any more packets, right? So in, in the, the stack can periodically check if it can still be using this offload. Okay, back to the data plane. So we, we didn't actually implement this because we were mostly focused on transmit. Um, but right now, <laughs> excuse me. Right now we have a mechanism to pass metadata to the driver from the hardware, but we don't really have a solid way to do that to the user space stack. So our proposal is to basically extract the metadata in the driver, store it in the control buffer in the SKB. When that hits the socket layer, it'll create a C message header and pass it on up to the stack. And hopefully that's, that works at scale. I'm not really sure because we didn't get to flesh this out. That's what the under construction is for. All right, on to segmentation offload. So the current segmentation support in Chromium <laughs> requires padding of the quick packets because of how it frames each packet. So if we didn't have the padding and you kind of took it out in that red circle, you'd be chopping in the middle of a quick header, which we can't allow. So you have to pad to MSS and then send it through the socket. We put it in our metadata and do our normal segmentation. Uh, this is just done through standard C message headers. And yeah, oh, the next one. So we want to avoid the padding. The way we propose to do that is basically take multiple MSS values per quick segment and send it through the socket to the driver and insert that as metadata to the hardware. Uh, this has some limitations because you can only send so much metadata to hardware, but we, this would work out much better because you don't have to send any unnecess unnecessary padding. Excuse me. But you create an array of uh, MSS C message headers. Pretty simple. So this is um, an extension of proposing a flexible interface just because we're not sure where this is going yet, but you could do something else to say, abstract the nonce away from the hardware as well. So just like you would send multiple MSS, you could send the nonce per segment as, as well, probably as a C message header. Um, but it just kind of keeps things open. But again, we didn't implement this version because our hardware can't support it right now, just to be clear. Okay. So in summary, um, we, we saw performance improvements up to 16% for CPU utilization and 32% for throughput. Um, the two interfaces we're proposing are independent. So you can have segmentation without crypto. But the problem is the crypto offload is not possible unless we get some kind of interface to send the keys to the hardware. And we wanted to make this a generic, generic uh, interface so maybe other protocols could possibly use it. It's just a generic crypto offload. Um, you know, going back to some of the opens, I mentioned you have to bind the 
socket to the device. We initially did this with SO bind to device, but I think that's deprecated now. So we need a better way to do that. Um, I already raised the question about the ingress metadata. And of course, asking again if there are other protocols we could use such an interface for. So that's what we have. Are there any questions? That's how to bind the device. It's not? Oh. I heard that somewhere. Okay. So we can use it. Use what? We use it for VRF as well. Okay. Uh, SO bind to device is not deprecated. I misread that somewhere. Very yeah. So, okay. <laughs> hmm? the, sort of. Uh, you can actually even use the C message mechanism to buy, to select your device on your way out if you, in, in the C message slot you can specify the, device, the interface that you're looking for. If you're just using interface as a handle. So that solves one problem. We have the other problem of needing uh, the net dev when we get to the socket layer to call the driver hooks. So talk, talk to that guy, David Ahern <laughs> over there. This is exactly the problem we had with VRFs. We, this is a solved problem. There are, it's a well-known okay. pattern. Can we get the mic? Yeah, we're... Um, thanks for the talk. Is this working? A little bit. Repeat my question. <laughs> Repeat my question. If it's either it's working. Um, so if you're using the Chromium stack implementation, then you're probably doing uh, GQuick offload. And no, we actually <coughs> modified the stack to to conform to the IETF. So you're doing TLS 1.3. Sorry. You're doing TLS 1.3. Uh, specifically, let me ask you the specific question I wanted to ask, which is mm -hmm. that I, I didn't see any mention of packet number encryption in here. Yeah, do you we have that? that we didn't do that because we started in the IETF version 11, which didn't Got have it. that. Okay, so this doesn't have packet number encryption, yes, but correct. you're aware Not of yet. the fact that Not that yet. needs to happen, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that's one piece that I, I, think, I think you're exactly right that using a general API for this is the right answer, generally. You don't want to do something that's absolutely quick specific. Yeah. Right. But uh, it's, there's, there's that one piece of packet number encryption that might be quick specific um, mm -hmm. because that's sort of a bit, bit of a bespoke mechanism where you have to do this two-staged uh, encryption and mm -hmm. just something to think about. If you thought about it already, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how feasible you think that's going to be. Yeah. Um, we were a little pressed for time. We were a little pressed for time, so uh, at one point we had the choice of doing packet number encryption versus doing segmentation. So we chose to add the segmentation bit for these experiments because um, that would be, we would be able to show a better um, CPU savings with segmentation. <coughs> with packet number encryption, um, the thing that we would suss out is that there's some complication of implementing it in hardware. And second is the additional latency that comes from you know um, doing that, uh, that flow. And uh, yeah, that, that's on the list to do at some point after this. But um, I think a few months ago, we chose segmentation over that. Mm -hmm. uh, and just one more question on the, on the MSS uh, <coughs> values that you mentioned. Um, am I understanding you correctly that there's a finite number of MSS values you can you can hold in hardware to pass to the metadata to the hardware? Yeah. There yeah. So, 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 so as uh, subsequent MSS values come in, they are simply going to get added to the list of MSS values that you already have, or do they replace yeah. the existing value? I'm not Re quite sure. Replace how the, the existing. It'd be per oh, packet see. sent down the stack. Oh, so so I could basically literally send just a packet size with every packet. Yes. Yeah. And that, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you for doing this work, by the way. It's really exciting. It's fun. <laughs> Over here. Um, sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah, so I think this is on the right track. A um, couple comments. So before we do quick offload, um, we need kquick in the same way that we had TLS and then KTLS and then TLS offload. So we would want, obviously, GRO, GSO um, for quick, and then you have to move the crypto down into the kernel and then figure out how to 
offload that. So that would be the normal path. I understand this is um, a POC. That being said, um, when they were developing QUIC, um, the engineers were very adamant QUIC is not for the kernel. And okay, fine. So I agree with that. So we're not going to have QUIC in the kernel, which means the word QUIC should not never appear in the kernel. What you have is a generic programmable thing that says this is how we um, program a UDP um, protocol that we can do GRO, GSO on, so that if that ever changes, and that's one big aspect of QUIC, certainly, they, they want to be able to change the protocol on the fly, which means we should be able to just, I don't know, download a BPF program that describes it or whatever. So we never have the word QUIC in the kernel. We're never pinned um, by the protocol in the kernel. Same thing should apply to the hardware, which I know is a little harder, but in my view, QUIC is the greatest example of why we need a programmable device. And like I said, so you can ask Yana, they're adamant, they want to be able to change the protocol, at least the encrypted part, which is where you need that, that segmentation, be able to change that. So we're going to be, have to be very dynamic in order to satisfy those requirements. So it's, it's, it's a great track, so I think we're on the right track, but um, generalization and abstraction are going to be really important. Yep. And obviously, we're going, to, we're going to want to apply all of this to other protocols besides QUIC at some point. Right. Yeah. That was the intention. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, about the sixteen percent you mentioned. Um, was it, uh, have you tried just to do the segmentation, the TSO, the USO part of uh, without the uh, the, the crypt, crypto stuff? Uh, yeah. Do you mean the sixteen percent of CPU utilization or the? Yeah, you you mentioned the sixteen percent saving, right? Yeah, that was for the combined, right? That was for the combined offload, right? With the it seems small improvement to me, but uh, let me just because Melanox did the GSO part last year when the GSO was implemented by William last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Melanox implemented the GSO in the, the Melanox five, I think, and they mentioned much higher uh, improvement just doing the GSO part. Uh, Keep in mind that the quick stack also has to do some work to actually enable it. So it's not just chopping the, the packets, but the quick itself, the stack needs to pad those packets and mm, like construct them in a the certain way. What do you mean? Uh, you basically, sure? yeah, we, if, we, if we had slides, we can show it. We, we <laughs> already have GSO for UDP in the kernel. It was yes, that is true. Year. But uh, there is also some extra work that actually the uh, quick stack needs to do with the packets, right? It needs to pad the, and create the batches of the packets. Yeah, but assuming this is already done by user space and this, this is done. Uh, yeah, but that's, the, the that's why product. we don't see the, uh, the same results that, that the Melanox in with just uh, how much you can speed up with, with enabling the segmentation itself. Okay. Do you also have the numbers for like just segmentation or just crypto? Uh, we have only just for the crypto. Can I go? Uh, yeah, we don't yet have the numbers for just the segmentation. So uh, I would like to try and respond to Tom. Uh, my main question is, uh, regardless if you put the world quick in the kernel, uh, maybe we can put a subset of quick, maybe only the crypto is defined well enough such that we can call it, I don't know, special crypto, not quick crypto, <laughs> such that it would be placed in the kernel, the but the quick protocol would not be there in any way. Would this be something that's acceptable to both ITF and the kernel community? So actually, I think from an ITF point of view, the protocol was designed to be easy, implementable in user space, but it doesn't mean that it can never ever be implemented in kernel space, right? That's not, that was not the intention. Well, I mean, isn't, so IETF technically should be agnostic to where the protocol is implemented. And I know, I know sometimes people say, oh, it's a user space protocol, it's a kernel protocol. Reality is <coughs> protocols were never intended to be run in a specific place. Mm -hmm. That being said, the, the reason we want to be careful here is because we're, we're entering hopefully a new realm where we do get new, new types of protocols coming in and we're not limited to what we've been limited to in the past few years. The, the big advantage of QUIC, honestly, 
is that it's not TCP. And that's forcing a lot of people to rethink. When you only have one protocol, you can build a world around that and you can optimize for that one only. And the problem is everybody gets zoned into that, that when something new and innovative comes along, we, there's no way to, to deploy it because you're stuck. So the way around this is to make sure that we have a platform where we can do these sort of new deployments. And the opportunity we have, since we have Quick, which is new and it's not in the kernel, we can do it right in that generic way and, and give us that freedom. So Quick 2, Quick 3, whatever's beyond that will be easier. So this, there's a long-term issue and a short-term issue here. And I think they're both satisfied by keeping things clean, keeping the kernel clean, and using the, a lot of the new techniques we have that really allow sort of this flexible programmability. So I'll just quickly piggyback on Tom's comment. I actually, I completely agree with what Tom said. Um, it's important to consider Quick as not the one ring that binds them all. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just not TCP and it's basically paving the way for more things to, to, to come. Um, and those could be subsequent versions of Quake. Those could be other protocols as well. And um, um, the idea of draft, I just did a quick scan, uh, does not mention user space. It doesn't even mention user, which is kind of strange. But it doesn't mention <laughs> user space even once, which is important because uh, the spec, as Tom mentioned, is, again, basically simply saying it's layered on top of UDP. It doesn't say anything about where the code lives. So yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the great talk. And uh, I, I wanted to ask if you have tried already to uh, offload the the whole uh, uh, handshake of Quick to the hardware. No, because that would ossify the protocol. Um, That's so, uh, in the yeah. same way you can do that with TCP because you, the sin flood there would be sh uh, probably no, for sure there would be similar attacks against Quick. Uh, so, uh, the handshake abuse, so... Yeah, but we, we deliberately chose not to do that. We don't want to, to, to actually accelerate the handshake because we want to have a freedom of what, whatever the stack wants to actually put into the keys. Well understood, thanks. There, there's also a subtle risk here. If we make this too easy, middle boxes may start implementing quick proxies. And <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we want to go there. <clears throat> Did you mention uh, an implementation of the lossive side? Uh, I didn't notice. Uh, We're doing receive, but uh, we didn't worry about the, the metadata part. So if we were focused on transmit, because web servers transmit heavy, right? But mm -hmm. it was doing bi-directional at some point. <laughs> So, so how did you pass the metadata? Like we weren't. So you you were ignoring it and assuming yeah. everything is yeah. Okay. So Maybe you could do it with the extensions and C messages as, as you mentioned. What's yeah. that? You can use the SKB extensions maybe with C message. I don't know. Just yeah. Just yeah. That sounds good. All right. We almost. We got a minute, but yeah. we we can. Thank We'd like to recoup though. the time, so thank you guys. <laughs>